Raymond James Stadium, the home of the Buccaneers. And the Packers will kick off to the Buccaneers. You haven't missed a thing. Ryan Longwell will get it done to Dwight Smith. Longwell will have a uh, substantial wind at his back. Ron Pitch was talking about how hot it is down there in the field, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have the advantage that this is their home, their home field, and they're wearing white jerseys. And white jerseys is a bigger factor than you think it is. White Smith. Right now, quickly for a game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey. Boy, a lot of shockers. The Giants three and one now. Philadelphia two and two. Arizona one and two. Dallas later. Washington 0 and four. First and ten. Tampa Bay at their own 21. The Green Bay defense, the best of the NFL. Brad Johnson back to throw it. Swings it outside, incomplete. Mike Allstott, the intended receiver. Let's look at the offense for Tampa Bay. And this is the big question mark, not necessarily the line, just the whole offensive concept. Walker McDaniel, Christy Coleman, and Jerry Wunsch. Jack has Green, Alsot Cook, Moore, and Keyshawn Johnson. John Madden was mentioning earlier they spent a lot of money to get Brad Johnson, Keyshawn Johnson. Second and ten. Keyshawn on the move. Alstott. Nine and a half. Tyrone Williams made the stop. Here's the Green Bay defense. Theory, Dotson, Brown, and Holiday. The front four. Three active linebackers. Wayne Harris in the middle and Diggs. And the secondary. Williams, Sharper, Butler, and McKenzie. Two good cornerbacks, two good safety men. Yeah, we're talking about how Mike Allstott is uh, taking Warwick Dunn's place, but on third down, what they do is they bring in Aaron Stecker, number 22, who's from Green Bay. He lines up in the backfield. Brad Johnson out of the shotgun, throws quickly. Pass caught by Keyshawn Johnson. That'll be enough for a Buccaneer first down. That's what they have to do. They bring in the, the three wide receivers. They get in a bunch here, you see, and then they all explode. One goes outside, one goes deep outside, and the other one just stops. The guy that stopped was Keyshawn Johnson, and he was open for the first down. Just barely open. That was pretty good coverage. Those of you who just watched that thrilling Arizona victory over Philadelphia 21-20, welcome to Tampa. The Buccaneers and the Packers. Those people have to all be thinking who would have fought. There's Allstock. Changed directions a couple of times, and the last direction was backwards. Bonnie Holiday led the defensive charge. Yeah, what they do is they get their safety up. You know, we talk about Green Bay. You see the safety right here. He just comes now. Now that he has the backside, so there's no cutback. So when they, when when Allstott goes to cut back, he was running away from the blitz. But then when he cut back, he cut back right into the blitz. That was Sharper, who is coming on the blitz. Sharper does that more and more. He does it more than Leroy Butler does. Now remember, it used to always be Leroy Butler. Back in ten, another blitz. This one's complete. The first pass of the year. Dave Moore, the tight end, makes the reception. Stopped by Nate Wayne. Those of you who watched New Orleans beat Minnesota 28-15, welcome to Tampa Bay, where this is the first possession of the game for the Buccaneers. Green Bay on defense, they kicked off. So you haven't missed much. Third and three. And again, Aaron Stecker, the second year running back, who's from Green Bay, Wisconsin, plays in third down situations. Stecker replacing Warwick Dunn makes the reception for a first down for Tampa Bay. And that's his job, so it's going to be the combination of Allstott running, playing first and second down, Aaron Stecker coming in and playing third down. Again, you see he just checks through, checks through, and then he runs to the left, lets the linebackers drop, let them get off in their zones, and then he comes in right underneath it. Remember, this is the, the same type of thing that Minnesota did to the Buccaneers last week. That's exactly right. All stud is the deep back. All 
gets the carry. You know the thing that would help Allstott and the and the running game of the Buccaneers if they would throw some on first down. I, mean, I think that, that now the the Packers are starting to play eight men up. It's early in the game, but you can't get into that thing that every first down you run. I think that you have to mix in, put Allstott in there, fake to him, and throw a pass on first down. Number 43 who plays with Allstott is Jameel Cook, a rookie fullback. He's out of Illinois and he played yeah. in Illinois for Ron Turner, North Turner's brother, and they use the same offense as the Buccaneers. This time it's Stecker who stays in the block. Johnson takes off. Crosses midfield to the Packer 48. Bernardo Harris made the stop. You know the last time the Buccaneers played here, played a home game? Remember that? Victory 38 35 over the Rams yeah. last year. That's yeah. the last time they played here. In regular season. In regular they season. played here in preseason. Right. They, yeah. Go ahead. Brett Favre, who's having, well, what a start he's having, anxious to get his act together and get it on the field. And if you're playing Brett Favre, if you're the opponent, that's exactly where you want Brett Favre. Right. That's the only safe place. And you want a lot of first down. Johnson. Diving Riddell Anthony. One of the and things that Clyde Christensen, I was just saying, Clyde Christensen, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday that they were going to be more aggressive and 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 for Tampa Bay, I think this is more aggressive. One, one getting the ball, throwing the ball, getting Riddell Anthony in there. I mean, if there's some guy that that can make a play, it may be this guy. There's Clyde Christensen there. In fact. He felt that against the Vikings that offensively they weren't aggressive enough. Well they moved it to the Green Bay 39 on their first possession. Three first downs got him there. This is all stunt. Bangs away and bangs away again. And still banging away. Not much to show for it. And one thing, he will keep banging away. But you know, the Packers, one of the guys they have back now is Big Gilbert Brown. Yep. And you have a matchup here where Mike Allstott is an inside runner. He's going to run between the tackles. Then you have Gilbert Brown, who is an inside run stopper. So now, is Gilbert Brown going to win those battles where Allstott has no place to run, or is Allstott going to run right by Gilbert Brown? You see that time, you see that time, Gilbert Brown didn't give him a cutback, played that very well, and then jumped in the pile at the end. That's tough, too. Second down, about 10. Keyshawn in motion. Dave Moore, the tight end, his second catch of the day, his second catch of the year. Nate Wayne brought him down. That was the thing that they said that they wanted to do, but it wasn't going to be a big thing. Is one of the reasons that uh, uh, Dave Moore hadn't caught a lot of passes is because remember Mike Allstott was playing all the time, and he was playing a lot of H back and tight end. So in a lot of the passing situations, Allstott was getting the passes that Dave Moore would get. Warren Dunn, who's out with a sprained ankle, sprained foot last week against Minnesota. The offense had been keyed around him. Here's Brad Johnson looking downfield, running. Finally throws it away. He had to throw it away because number 71, Santana Dotson, was right there. Ex-Buccaneer. Yep, and the, the guy that has been injured. This is his first game that he, he started. Jim Flanagan had been starting in his place, and uh, they feel that, that Santana Dotson isn't 100%. He's about 80%. And he gave that 80% on that last play. Martin Gramatica from 53 yards out. 53 yards in. Tell you, he looks good in the uniform, my man Gramatica. <laughs> I mean, he kicks the heck out of the ball, looks good. What happened since last week? And it's just wide right. It might have gotten there. It was close, but wide right. So it's nothing, nothing. The Packers will take over. Back in Tampa Bay. That's at the end of Pirate Ship, at the end of the stadium. Cannons and cabins and all kind of decorations. Here's Brett Favre. Come on, Green.
Dexter Jackson made the stop. That's not a good sign early. Here's the Green Bay offensive line. They're young and they're talented. A good offensive line for the Packers. Schrader, Green, Henderson, Bubba Franks, the tight end, and Antonio Freeman. And of course, the leader, Brett Favre. Donnie Abraham makes the interception. Abraham still going. Out of bounds. And yeah, they, the tried to, they tried to sneak that one in. That was David Martin, who was a backup tight end, who split out there, and they tried to hit him on a slam. The Bucks were waiting for it. Yeah, here's David Martin down here in the bottom. And you can see that they have the, the, the two wide receivers up here. Then they have a tight end here. Then they have the second tight end, David Martin, here. And, and Tampa Bay just stays with the corner. They think they're going to get that slant in here. And you, you just watch. He's just going to come in there and wait for that. Looks like the Buccaneers knew that that play was coming. And it was something that they tried to sneak in. You know, sneak in the two tight ends, put Martin, a rookie, out. And, and, and the Bucs didn't adjust to it at all. This is Stecker with the ball, and he gets around the corner, falls as he crosses the 45 to about the 44. Aaron Stecker on the run. Didn't expect to see him too much on first down like that. Well, I think it was that thing that we talked about. Now all starts coming in on, on on second down that they didn't want to let that that Packer defense just gang up on the run on first down. So with Stecker, it may be like Warwick Dunn. Maybe when he's in there. You don't know if they're going to run or pass. Right. Now all sets back. But Brett Favre started off the, the same way last week, remember? And he yep. started off, he had he had two interceptions in the first half. He came back against Carolina and lit him up in the second half. All sets comes out in motion. Brad Johnson back to throw. Keyshawn Johnson will get a Buccaneer first down. Nate Wayne. Had him and missed him. Let's go down to Ron Pitts. Well, Pat, there's a reason they call this the visitor sideline here in Tampa. Look at the way the sun is facing the Packers. On the other side where the Bucks are, they're more in the shade. But you walk over to this side, it's like a different world. The guys are squinting, and it's noticeably much more hotter. And it's all because of that big bad boy right up there. And that's that, Mike McKenzie who's down. Yeah, he was, he was defending uh, Keyshawn Johnson. And you're going to see it right here. Here's Keyshawn. Now, Keyshawn was telling us yesterday that he takes a lot of hits, but he always tries to take the hits on his back. And you saw him to just turn so that McKenzie would hit him in the back. Here he is up here. See, anytime they're off, they want to get the ball out to Keyshawn Johnson. See how he just turns his back a little? Looks like McKenzie went down on his right shoulder. He does. But he's still down. And Keyshawn gets the Buccaneer first down. McKenzie is down. They're checking Mike McKenzie's uh, neck over there. Remember, yeah. the, he went down just as uh, Keyshawn Johnson caught the ball and then spun off him. It looked like Mike McKenzie went right down into the ground with his head and shoulder. Todd McBride is taking his place. Here is Brad Johnson back with time. Gets it out for a loss, maybe to all stop. Maybe they got enough for. A short game, not much, certainly. Uh, he was trying to go deep over here to the left. He was trying to throw a cross to Keyshawn Johnson on the left. He had two receivers. He had Jacquez Green and Keyshawn over to his left. That's where he was looking. They had good coverage. The pack did. And then so he came back to the other side. So here's Keyshawn here just going on a cross. You see, this is where he was trying to throw. And he looked and he looked and he had two receivers right there. And he thought they were covered. Then he came back off to all stuff. Second and long, Steckers, the deep back. Too much time. Right in the snap. Ball start. Number 71 offense. Five yards. Second down. Jerry Wunsch. Move to some. There's the head coach of the Buccaneers, Tony Dungy. And that, that loss last week to Minnesota, he said, was really a tough one. I mean, all losses are tough for a coach, but he said that one took him longer to get over than most. I mean, he thought there was no way that they should have lost last week to the Vikings. Once again, 
A miraculous catch by the Vikings is what it took to do it. Brad Johnson got rid of it. I think Keyshawn slipped down. Brad was under pressure. I tell you, Vonnie Holiday was right there. Watch Vonnie Holiday here, number 90. He's turning into being a heck of a defensive lineman in this league. I mean, so big and strong, he can play the run, he can rush the passer, he has a good bull rush. And if 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 Johnson doesn't throw the ball exactly when he did, Vonnie Holiday was going to have a sack. Third and about 13. Bucks are pretty well, good today on third down, Pat. They're three yeah. out of four. Last week, that was their problem. They were only one out of eight. Stecker's the deep back. Batted down as Brad Johnson was looking for Stecker. Bonnie Holiday again. Yeah, Bonnie Holiday has taken over this series, hasn't he? I mean, he's, you know, they move him from the right side to the left side, usually on the strong side. Then on passing downs, they play him as a defensive tackle in the middle. And that's what he's doing right here. And again, that's that's your rule. If you can't get to the passer, if you can't get a hand on him, stop and get your hand up and make him throw through you. Mark Royals in the punt for Tampa Bay. Bucks get a break, but can't take advantage of it. Royals hangs it high. The ball bounced at the one. Looked as if it was going in the end zone, and it did. Nothing, nothing score. We're still in the first quarter with 3.56 left. The injury report on Green Bay Packer cornerback Mike McKenzie. He took a shot to the ribs, bruised ribs, is the report right now. It's not the neck like we originally thought. So whether or not he'll come back in the game is unknown. I'll get back to you on that later. Pat? Here's Favre rolling to his right and throwing. Pass complete to Schrader. You know, I think Brett Favre can do that as well as anyone. Yeah. You know, that, that, that thing where he, he fakes and then runs and throws. You see, he's going to fake, and then he's going to start out here. Now, he could throw it at any point. He could have thrown it quickly there or wait and wait and wait until he finds someone open. I like what Bill Schrader yeah. does here. I mean, I mean, he, he knows that he has a little scramble going now. And now the thing, always work back to your quarterback and give him a target. If he had Schrader turn outside, Favre would have had him throw the ball out of bounds. Two tight ends set up. That's Corey Bradford in motion. Here's Favre to Green, who breaks a couple of tackles and gets outside the 45. And right now, let's go to Los Angeles for a game break and James Brown. A pattern what looks like a pretty good marriage in Oakland with uh, Tim Brown and Jerry Rice. Take a look at Rice hauling in his fourth touchdown reception of the season. That one a five-yarder, and it's Oakland on top of Dallas, 7-0. And the first, Pat Summerall, John Madden. Nothing, nothing score in Tampa. You see who was there to pick him up? It was Frank Middleton, who was the starting right guard for the Bucks last year. Green is the deep back. Henderson, the fullback, far back to throw it. Throw him deep. He's got Antonio Freeman open. Looked like he might have stopped running for a moment and, and then tried to turn it back on. And that's the thing that you can't do. And Brett Favre threw a perfect pass. And you're going to see Warren Sapp here. He's going to be chasing Brett Favre all day. And just as Brett Favre releases that ball, boom, there's Warren Sapp on top of him. But all that considered, though, is a perfect Brett pass. Favre threw a perfect pass. Yep. Antonio Freeman has to catch that ball. I mean, he made a good move to get that open, but when you can throw a ball when you're under pressure like that, that makes you Brett Favre. Third down, about six. Oops. Flag. And that's going to be Mike Wall, the old left guard. I think he jumped a little early. Part of the snap. Ball start, number 68, offense. Five yards, third down. This is before the game. Hello to an old buddy. Well, you know, they they play each other twice a year, and they've been playing each other twice a year, so one is going to look up one. Brett Favre looks up Sapp. <laughs> Sapp doesn't even have to look, and he knows who it is. He's talking. I think defensive linemen can smell quarterbacks. Sapp has put the rush on. They get the ball to Green. 
Who jukes one and jukes another and gets a Packer first down. He did that just about all on his own. He, he is turning into something special. Remember, he came out of Nebraska, was with the Seattle Seahawks. They thought that he was a fumbler. Mike Holmgren trades him to the Green Bay Packers. Dorsey Levins gets hurt. And since Amon Green has become the starter on this Packer team, they've been a much, much better team than the Packers of old. With moves like that, he's going to make a lot of people miss. Uh, you know, the other thing that he does, he always carries the ball in his left hand, and he still does, I think, have a tendency to fumble. Amon Green. Hit by Eric Vance. Looking like he might lose yardage, but he doesn't do that very often either. Yeah, when we were talking to Amon Green yesterday, he said, the thing that I try and do is finish off every run, and when the pile ends, I want to, I want to be going forward. My legs moving and going forward. We're talking to Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator of the Buccaneers the other day, and he says, we want all piles to go backwards. Amon Green won that pile. Amon Green gets a rest. Henderson, the fullback, Dorsey Levens, the deep back. Almost picked off. Could have been picked off if he'd been watching the ball instead of the receiver. If Shelton Quarles was out there in the... That's a zone. And Shelton Quarles just came out and he was playing the zone. He's just waiting out there for anyone that comes in his zone. And he should be watching the quarterback and looking at that side. Yep. And you just see Shelton Quarles. He's gonna he's gonna drop to the outside, and he's just gonna be waiting here, waiting here, waiting here. And then the, as the ball is thrown, as you said, at some point you have to either go for the ball or for the guy. I think he went for the ball. Oh God, not the ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Third down. Levens is the deep back and. Far drops it to Dorsey Levens, who gets close to a first down. That's Derek Brooks. Dorsey Levens wasn't active last week. He's, he's had a, a bump back, but uh, you know he's a heck of a spot player oh, because yeah. Dorsey Levens is a good runner and he's a very good pass receiver. And now with Amon Green being the featured guy and doing the bulk of the work, I think that that they can keep that they can keep Dorsey Levens healthy and he doesn't have to play as much. He doesn't have to be a pounder because he's not a pounder. They had the same kind of situation when they had Edgar Bennett and Dorsey Levens when he first came up. And that's that's when they were very good. Yes. They would bring him into situations like this. The handoff. Favre keeps it, throws it down the middle to his tight end, David Martin. He did a good job of hiding that. Yeah, he's a very good bootlegger. And, you know, most right-handed quarterbacks will bootleg out to the right. Brett Favre is going to make the fake and then bootleg out to the left. You see, you fake to the right, then you come out to this left. Now, to do that, you have to get your shoulder squared and turned to be able to throw the ball. And, as I said, most, most quarterbacks will bootleg, go out to the right, but Favre will bootleg and go out anywhere. Warren Sapp had to have a rest. Yeah, well, he's been, we were talking about that earlier. He's been chasing Brett Favre all day. Brett Favre looks like, like he could use a little rest, too. That's the end of the first quarter with the score of Green Bay nothing, Tampa Bay nothing. Welcome to a little rest. First quarter statistics. You know, you can see Brett Favre coming in there, Pat. Look at his left wrist. He has a wristband on there. And, and that's the play, the offensive plays, and they're numbered. And, and what Mike Sherman says, the reason we do that is he said with this West Coast offense, there's so much verbiage. It takes so long, so long to call a play that instead of giving all the verbiage, we just put in a number. Run seven. Green goes in motion. And far. Has the pass picked off. That's Sheldon Quarles. Quarles stays on his feet. He could go all the way, and he will. If he doesn't run out of gas. No flags anywhere. 98 yards. Last 
time we said that Shelton Quarles didn't play the, the ball, he played the man. This time, Quarles played the ball. It's a pretty good interception right here. And you can see that he gets a, he gets a jump on it there. It was thrown to Bubba Franks. Bubba yeah. Franks was coming across. Red Farm looked to the right, looked to the middle, and then he came back across. Jordan Quarles was watching him all the way, and he got a good jump on it. Gramatica for the extra point. Royals holding, and it's good. And the Bucks look like they might be behind at this point. Just went ahead 7 0. 98 yards by Sheldon Quarles. Quarles right here. He's man to man on Bubba Franks. Bubba Franks is going to run across. Shelton Quarles just runs right with him and jumps in front of the ball right there. See him? Here they come. They've come across now. Right there, Quarles gets the jump and he's going to run it back 98 yards. That's the longest ever in Buccaneer history. The old record has been held by Neil Colsey of 82 yards, so he breaks it by 10. Or more than that. This kick sails deep into the end zone. Mealy downs it. Packers look like they'd be ahead 7 0, now trail 7 0 at their own 20. They're in a shotgun on first down. This is Green. To the 25. Singleton made the stop. Quarles. Here's where I knew he was going to score, Pat. The only guy chasing him was an offensive lineman. They're right there, Mike Flanagan. So you knew that Quarles was going to run out of gas. He dove. I don't much of as he dies, he's going to run 98 yards and hit right on the goal line. He is on fumes about that time. Well, he was on fumes, but the guy chasing him was an offensive lineman, Mike Flanagan, the only guy out there. And yeah, he was less than fumes. <laughs> Henderson who gets one of his rare carries and Henderson will get one or two rare carries and one or two rare catches per game that far but so far is four out of eight for 71 yards but two interceptions and again I go back to last week against the Carolina Panthers he did the same thing had two interceptions in the first half in fact the pack was behind in the first half third and three. This is tough playing on the road, getting your audibles in. That's what Brett's doing now. Amon Green might have gotten the first. He needed to get right to the stripe. Webster made the stop. You see the official put his left foot down and then his right foot down and then he put the ball behind both of them. I guess the tip of the ball must be right there in the left foot. And that is a first down. Monty Kiffin, the old defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, was out there yes. arguing that it wasn't a first down. Monty Kiffin's a heck of a guy and a heck of a coach, and he's, he's been at it a while, but he still enjoys it. Never had a cup of decaffeinated coffee in his life. <laughs> <laughs> when you look in the dictionary of caffeine, the first thing it says is Monty Kiffin. <laughs> Here comes Warren Sapp to the sideline. Lynch on the sideline as well. A little discussion, I think, about where the ball was marked. Tony Dungy. He's challenging the ruling on the field that the ball reached the 30 yard line for a first down. The challenge. Is not charged with a team timeout. I don't know how he knew six inches. I wouldn't go six inches. When you look at the knee, now the ball has to get to the line when the knee is down. So you got to watch the knee, the ball, and the line. And now what he's saying, what he's saying is that when the knee went down, the ball was six inches away from the line. So they move the ball back six inches. The great thing about that challenge is uh, the defense gets a chance to rest a little bit. Well, and then, and then you know, Green Bay has to punt yeah. instead of having a first yeah. down. It's a fourth down and all. There's a lot of stuff that goes with yeah. that. You wouldn't think six inches. The flag on the play is Carl Williams with the punt. And Williams has got some room and 
Let's see how he can run. Carl Williams almost broke it. And I think the Bucks know that it's against them because yeah. the Buccaneer offense has stayed down here on this side of the field and they're going down there to huddle up. Well, the flag came down early. You know, in the history of the Buccaneers, I know that was a punt return, but in the history of the Buccaneers, they have never returned a kickoff for a touchdown. Holding number 22 of the receiving team. The foul occurred while the ball was in the air. The receivers will keep the ball after the penalty for their foul. First down. Timeout. Seems like I've seen that statistic that you were talking about somewhere before. <laughs> Like every game we've ever done. Summer all John Madden. We're in Tampa Bay. Where the Buccaneers lead the Packers 7 0. 98 yard interception returned by Sheldon Quarles. The only score so far. All stop. Fights his way out to the, about the 14. I tell you, with Gilbert Brown in there, we talked about that. That you know, Mike Allstott likes to run downhill. To run downhill, you have to run inside. To run inside, you have to run at Gilbert Brown. Now, now watch this there. I mean, there's going to be a pile right there, and he's going to try. And he somehow he comes out the other end of it. I mean, yeah. I have no idea how the A train does that. I mean, here's big Gilbert Brown. He weighs 300 and I don't know 40 pounds or whatever. He weighs 39. About 339. He used to weigh down there 400. And how do you get by him? All stop. For a yard, let's go to Los Angeles now with James Brown and a game break. We're in Tampa, Florida, where the Buccaneers face a third and four. Steckers in the backfield with Brad Johnson. Now the Packers have to come up for a, with a turnover. Johnson hits Riddell Anthony. He gets outside the 30 at four buck first down. Yeah, we talked about earlier Dave Moore catching his first pass. Riddell Anthony caught his first pass, and that was his second pass there. I think that he's kind of a better forgotten guy, too. They want to get him healthy because he is a speed guy that can make some plays. You see what happened here? He started on that thing. It was just like a pivot out. He started to go in, then he stopped. The defender stayed there, and then he worked his way out. A late flag on the play. That's a good sign for the Mike Packers. That, back, yeah, yeah. yeah, Mike McKenzie is back in the corner. Mister, we were talking to Ed Donatel, who's the defensive coordinator of the Packers, and. He said, you know, the, the thing that he appreciated and liked about Ron Wolf, who was the general yeah. manager of the Packers and just retired, is that he believed that you build a team with corners. And he would draft corners even when they had corners. So when you come in, they have a whole no bunch foul of foul on the play. The action was not directed directly at, a, at an opponent. You know, they're going to clamp down on the taunting yeah. this, this, this year, so I guess they say that you can do it, but it has to be directed at a player. Well, Riddell Anthony got up and signaled first down. And then they, I guess they talked it over and said, okay, that was maybe he was taunting, but he didn't direct it at another player. Here comes Brad Johnson, gets it outside to Jamal, Jamil Cook. Johnson's the rookie fullback. And, and that's a, that's the thing that they like about Jameel Cook being a rookie. And we talked about how he played at Illinois and Ron Turner, the coach, here, uses the same type of offense and the and the backs catch balls and do this type of thing. So Jameel Cook, even though he is a rookie, has been doing these same types of things in college. Red Fog looking over the defenses that he'll face when he comes back. Second down. Packers showing blitz. Sharper creeping up. And we're going to bring Bernardo Harris and Darren Sharper side by side in that A gap and C gap. And that, that's that's tough when you're an offensive line. Part of the snap, snap, ball start, start, number 19, offense. Five yards, yard, second 
This this is a play before, and I watch Brad Johnson after he throws the ball. Oh, that was a late hit. Yep. But it wasn't. Yeah, you know, I, th I think he was trying to get out of the way. It was Bajan Biamella. He was pleading his case too. Yeah, he was saying he was blocked into him. Second down. Outside to Dave Moore. That's his third catch. The tight end. He caught none in the previous two games. You know, Brad Johnson looks a lot more comfortable today. And one of the things, you know, we we, we think that these quarterbacks come and we have free agency and they come into a team and they're going to be just like they were with the last team, but it takes a while to get used to things. I mean, to players, to to coaches, to terminology, and and so far, I didn't feel that Brad Johnson has ever gotten comfortable in this offense. Well, he said that. He said, I'm not quite comfortable yet. And, and he had looked that way, but he looks a little more comfortable today. Three-man rush. Johnson gets to Stecker, who will be short of the first down. Not a popular call. Yeah, they don't. I mean, that's that's the thing that we talked about earlier. You, you know, they, I mean, you have Brad Johnson, and he's getting pretty good protection. You have Keyshawn Johnson, and he's a possession receiver, and that's the time that you would use your quarterback throwing to your possession receiver, and that's what the fans want. That's kind of what I would want. I mean, that's not. I mean, what are you paying those guys yeah. so much money for? Let them play. Let them make plays for you when you need plays to be made. Mark Royals back to punt. Antonio Freeman will return it for the Packers. Sure handed. Dwight Smith down to make the stop. Remember when he was a rookie, he came up and came from nowhere to return a couple of punts for touchdown. I think Tampa Bay. Don't forget the play baseball playoff start on Fox Tuesday. The Indians and Mariners game at four o'clock on the Fox Network presented by MasterCard and the rest of the lineup you can see the the Astros are beating the Cardinals this afternoon the score is nine to one. So that has effect on who plays where. To Green. And he is finally hammered. But he's still working to get forward. Well, he was in the and the, and the things about the thing about the Buck defense is they always get a lot of their jerseys there and they gang tackle and and if you miss a tackle and they're they're missing more tackles the last couple of games than I remember but if you miss a tackle like this boom you got another guy right there and then a third guy right there see that's how you play defense not everyone is going to be a sure tackle make that first tackle but you better have some friends coming that was Nate Webster that finished it off finally. Barb drops it up the middle. That's Amon Green. On the subject of baseball, the Wednesday schedule. Fox Network. I told you guys about the A's. I'm a baseball yeah, guy from way back. I'm from Oakland from way back, and I told you, watch out for the A's. No one listened to me. Green's hit at the line of scrimmage. Quickly down to Ron Pitts. Well, guys, the Bucks starter is starting to get nicked up. John Lynch, we already mentioned him with a left groin pull. He's questionable. Now, right guard Cozy Coleman has a bruised right knee. His return is questionable. Pat? And it's hot. And Cozy Coleman uh, has been one of the guys down there that you know, has had to block against Gilbert Brown. Yeah. And that'll, that'll tend to bend the knee some ways that it shouldn't be bent. Russ Hochstein will take his place. Brett Favre, second and nine. Three. Let's send you now to Los Angeles again for a game. Seven nothing here. The Buccaneers over the Packers. Green Bay ball at their own 33. And Warren Sapp has to come up with a play here, and he, he really looks tired. Yeah. Talk about is there any gas in this tank? Well, he's loose. Yep, there was some gas. Oh, throw to Schrader, and Schrader's gone. That is amazing. It is. Brett Favre was being hit just as he threw it, and he threw a perfect pass to Bill Schrader. That's the second time that he's done that. Remember earlier he did to Antonio Freeman, although Freeman didn't catch the ball? 
Look at Sapp. He's saying, I gave everything that I had. I mean, this really frustrates you. Here's Schrader. He's the outside guy. He's going to run a bend up, a little out and up, and then he catches the ball. It was a cover two, and he caught it between the rotated corner coming up and the safety coming over. And he really tightrope that sideline, too, yes, didn't he? he? Did. Now, watch Sapp. He's right there. He zeroes in on him. He knows he has him. He gives him a shot, and, and Brett Favre throws a touchdown a pass. Strike. That is frustration, and that is Brett Favre. Longwell ties it up. The flag on the play. Isn't that something? And Schrader, you know, usually you you try as you're going up that sideline, you want to give your your quarterback a little room to the outside. Schrader ran right up along the sideline. He caught it right on the sideline. And Brett Favre, you know, because his arm is so strong, he doesn't always have to have his feet in perfect position. Twelve men on the field on the defense. Eric Vance. The point is the good. Instead of that foul will be assessed on the kickoff. That's what the Buccaneer to miss right there. And look at how close he gets to that sideline. Big play for Schrader. This is the safety here. He's taking John Lynch's place. This is a cover two. Corner's going to come up and bump, and the safety has to get over. Now watch. You'll see Bill Schrader takes an outside release up there, gets by the corner. Now if we can stop it right here. You see, here's the corner. Here's the safety. Here's the hole that he has to throw into. Brett Favre made a perfect throw into that hole. Longwell kicks it off. Dwight Smith will return from the five. Kept going down the sideline out of bounds at about midfield. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday begins with the Pacific on Fox. John and Alfie at St. Louis. They look about as good as anyone uh, in this league, don't they? So the far. St. Louis Rams. They really do. 7-7 seven, seven tie here. Here's Brad Johnson back to throw. Just does get rid of it. Caught by the tight end, Moore. He was down. And again, let's send you down to Ron Pitts. Well, John Madden, you were just talking about the great throw by Brett Favre. Mike Tomlin, the Bucks defensive back coach, walked over to the DBs right after that and said, listen, guys, this is a great quarterback. He's going to make some great plays. Just keep playing. Pat? Holding, holding. Number 67, offense. Ten yards, first down. Kenyatta Walker, the Bucks' number one draft choice. You know, and I think I think that's the thing you have to do. I mean, there's Monty Kiffin. He's talking to his defense there, and, and he knows he have to keep rushing Brett Favre. You have to stay on him, but he, he is a great quarterback. Yes, and he, he is, is. going to make some plays, but he'll give you a chance for you to make some plays against him. Hard to believe he's going to be 32 on Wednesday. But on the other hand, it seems like he's been around forever. I mean, he just seems like a kid from Mississippi. Yeah. He just came into the league. Still does. Yeah, at 18 years old or something. That was 11 years. And, you know, they talk about all the records and everything. But the one to me that's most amazing is this is his 145th consecutive game. That's consecutive now, start. Consecutive start. Now, to me, that is a lot like Cal Ripken Jr. I mean, it, what, what he did in baseball, that Iron Man thing, I think Brett Favre is doing the same thing in football. Well, look at the picture. He looks like a kid from Mississippi. Well, he is a kid from Mississippi. Kill Mississippi. Mississippi. I think if he ever grows up, he'll probably get out of the game. Keyshawn Johnson from Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson is, is getting rid of the ball quicker today, and, and you can see that, that, that he has to. I mean, this is a pressure that they're putting on him, but he's making some throws with that pressure on him. And he's not Brett Favre, he's not Dante Culpepper, but he has been he has been making some throws with some pretty good pressure against him. Been hit five times, hurried five times, hasn't been sacked, but they've been close. Over the middle, Keyshawn Johnson. Okay. Leroy, Butler. Leroy Butler, number 36. We're talking about the old safeties. There's another guy in his 12th year. Yep. 
Seems like just just the other day that Leroy Butler was getting out of Florida State, but he was right there. He saw that one coming and he jumped on it. He knew that that probably the favorite pattern of Keyshawn Johnson is that crossing pattern. Well, Florida State has put out some great players, and Brad Johnson and Leroy Butler are the two that have been there the longest time. Yeah, after Deion Sanders retired. From behind. Bia Miller. I tell you, and he got on the, on the rookie Kenyatta Walker. You're going to see, here's Walker here. He's even getting back a little. Know that he has to deal with speed here. Bia Miller has great speed and leverage. You see, he gets underneath the pads, and once he gets underneath your pads, then his feet get even with your feet, and you are beaten. That's his seventh sack of this year. You know that old thing about when you're even, you're leaving? When you have speed, whenever you get even, you're leaving. And that's what he has. Mark Royals to punt again. High kick. Freeman signals fair catch at the 18-19. Flag on the play. You know, we were looking at that shot over there of the of the Green Bay sideline, and I saw one of our, our our favorites there talking about guys who've been around a long time Frank Winters yeah who's now the backup center old bag of donuts who's played and started and played so well for these Green Bay Packers over the years that bag of donuts would be heavy today holding number 80 of the receiving team during the kick Green Bay will keep the ball I'll tell you, after the would. penalty for their foul, first down. But there's no place that he would rather be right now than in there mixing it up with, with Warren Sapp. This is a tough thing for him. I mean, he's a guy who has a heck of a lot of pride, wants to play, do all those things. Here's the penalty on the play before. You see the hold right Oh, geez, that's a hold, a grab, a takedown, a roll, a bounce up. Took all about five deals on that one. Donald Driver, the culprit. Here's Dorsey Levins. We're talking about Frank Winters, a you know, 15-year veteran, and they just figured that it was Mike Flanagan's turn to play. That Mike Flanagan is is, is younger, is only in his sixth year, and, and at some point you have to make a change. And they, the year before, they let uh, uh, Winters and, and Flanagan fight it out. Winters beat him out. This year they said we just have to do it. They just put Mike Flanagan in there and said you're the center. Frank Winters had to take a pay cut and uh, just watch from the sideline. But if anything happens to Flanagan, they're still going to have a very good center in there. He and Earl Dotson both veterans of those great Super Bowl championship teams. Two minutes left to play in the first half and we're tied at seven. See the flag in front of us. It sure is. Warren Sapp psyching himself up. That was before the, the last play. He knew that the two minute warning was coming. The Green Bay Packers weren't going to run a play. And he was just going to, he's just winding the clock down, waiting it to get to two minutes. I think the Packers are going to be satisfied just getting out of here tied. Five. We thought John Lynch was out of there. John Lynch is back in there. Bubba Franks, the attended receiver. When I saw some body come flying through the air, I knew that John Lynch had to be around or close or part of it. We had a report that he had a pole groin, and uh, I think that they figure that they, they have Green Bay pretty one under control, and they're not going to let him get another one. Well, John Lynch, Lynch is one of those guys who... If there's ever been anybody who's going to play hurt, it would be John Lynch. And that touchdown pass we saw to Bill Schrader, Eric Vance, who yeah. took his place, was the deep guy who was really beaten in the zone. Here's Favre back to throw it. Chase to the sideline. Throws it to one of the assistants. Well, you can do that, too. And that's that's the thing. Once you get side, outside that tight end box, a quarterback can throw it away. There's Sapp. He was, he was having a little something to do with Mike Flanagan. Now he's going after K.D. Williams. Old Sapp has words for everyone. But that's the thing. You know, the, the quarterback can't throw the ball away in the pocket 
to avoid a sack. But if he's outside the tight end area, he can throw it away. Josh Bidwell to punt it for Green Bay. Carl Williams back deep. Buccaneers have all of their timeouts left. Williams at the 35. Flag on the play already. Williams almost broke one earlier. Gets to midfield. And that's going to be holding against the punt team or against the Packers. I think they got, you know, you know, Williams had a couple of pretty good returns, and the ball would be at midfield if they turned the penalty down. Packer player down. I don't know. I think I think you know the the Packers aren't covering well. Yeah. I think I would make them punt it again. Watch right here. This is this is what Neely gets. He didn't he didn't see that one because you can't see out Holding your hole. Number 32 of the kicking team. Half the distance to the goal line. Repeat fourth down. We got to have him kick again. Yeah. I think I think that's a good move. This is a pretty good hit. Well, those those are ones I remember Steve Young was talking once about concussions and being hurt. And he said he said it's not really getting hit in the head or really getting knocked. It's it's getting hit when you don't see it. You he don't said, see him coming. It's that flip whiplash type of thing that you get that that is the biggest problem. And that's exactly what happened there. But after you play a while you learn to look around. Yeah. Rondell Mealy didn't do that. He you learned to as you say put it. Put your head on a swivel. Yeah. Although they don't put rear view mirrors on those helmets. Mondel Ron, Mealy, you're going to see him right here. He wasn't looking. No, 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 he wasn't looking, didn't, didn't feel it, didn't see it, didn't hear it, didn't anything. He will feel it. Coming up on the Visa halftime report, JB Terry, Howie, and Chris will have stalled oh, inside the 50 yard line. It would take about a. It'll be backed up almost to get to the back of the end zone. Tampa Bay has two timeouts left. Tampa Bay has three. Green Bay has only two. I'm sorry. Yeah, and they'll get one one time out here at, at change of possession. So, in essence, with a minute 30 seconds, that's plenty of time for the Bucks because they, as you say, they have all three of their timeouts plus a change of possession. So the clock will stop, or the is capable of stop. Well, that's a parade they have. Yeah, there. it's like a mini Mardi Gras. Yeah, because all those people that you see in the stands are all wearing those beads. Yeah. That's from Gasparilla, I think. Those are Gasparilla beads. Seen a lot of Gasparilla yeah. beads today in the stands as I was walking through. I kick this one's going to be, should be well covered. Williams takes it. And just about where they would have been before. Driver down first. Baseball playoffs, whatever the sport is, it's a new season, and I mean, everyone gets a new life. Everyone has a shot. Every clean piece of paper, as I say. Same in football. Once the season's over and the playoff starts, a different atmosphere. Trying to set up a screen that's holding on the play. This is Aaron Stecker. The loss of about three. Yeah, and that's going to be against the Buccaneers. So all that work of having the the punt done over yep. you know, taking the penalty getting them backed up and all that stuff the the Packers have, have fought their way out of that personal foul number 67, number 67 of the offense grabbing the face mask and turning it 15 yards Kenyatta Walker that's the rookie Kenyatta Walker who's had a tough time over there and he's blocking against Roger Biamilla and and we know that that Roger Biamilla has that has that great speed and so you, you get into those types of situations and and, it, and you're always you get your feet out of position and your hands do things that they shouldn't be doing and, and it's tough. I mean you know it's it's tough playing against speed wherever the speed is. Right there it is. And it comes in a hurry. Here he is around the corner picked up pass complete up to the 40. 
Sean Johnson. I, I don't think anyone blocked him. He just was I, picked up by somebody up back, I think. I think he got a second. I think, see, see, here he comes free. Yeah. See, Walker blocks down, and by the time he looks out there, he's by him. There, there That's was right. It was Aaron Stecker. Stecker. Yeah. Stecker came in and hit him just before he hit Brad Johnson. Kabir Bajabia Miller. He was the NFL Defensive Player of the Week last he week. He should have been. Coming up on the visa. You know, this heat is is starting to get to a lot of these guys. Yeah, I mean, I where, where, you know, I mean, the injury may be another type of injury, but caused by darn near complete exhaustion after half a play by the heat. Especially a play like that where he, the blocker came as a surprise, came out at the last second and hit him in the midsection. Takes its toll. San Diego State, and he came in here real raw and green in it, but he did have ability, just a natural instinct to rush the passer. Second and long. Brad Johnson back deep. Pass is caught by Jacquez Green. They still need about 10 for a first. And that was the first one to Jacquez Green. It was a heck of a catch because that ball was thrown behind them. Johnson back again. Steps up and is slung down. That's John Theory. Yeah, we're talking about Bajan being Miller having having the speed. And the other guy on the other side is John Theory that has the speed. So they can give you, you know, with both those guys on opposite sides, they can give you speed from either end. And when they're not there, Bonnie Holiday is. Yeah, you look at the feel. I mean, there's just Reset like players dropping all over the place. Yeah. Seven seven tie with the clock running. And a Green Bay timeout. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Packers tried to get ready for this. They they practiced indoors. They they turned the heat up. Yep. When you're and when the, you're in Green noise. Bay, it's tough to get ready for the weather in Tampa. It's the new nightly show that features a comedian who's a diehard sports fan and a bunch of ex jocks who really know the game. You know, I'm sure up here it feels like this has been a long first half. Yes, it has. And then we're up here. I mean, we haven't been running and hitting and crawling and doing those types of things. Antonio Freeman back deep to field it. Bounces short. Bounces into the end zone. The Packers will start at the 20 with 16 seconds left. I'm sure right now that they're just going to come in here and just and, and just take a knee yeah. and go in at the halftime 7-7. Seven, seven. They don't have any timeout. I thought they were going to do that the last time they had the ball, but they did. And then there was a penalty on the punt. This thing has just been going on and on. I think with 15 seconds, they'll just they'll just end the half because again, change of possession, automatic timeout, and the clock won't start until the ball is snapped. But with him, you never know. Yeah, I think I think he just told everyone that he's going to do that. I think he even told the defense that he's going to do that. Yeah, they all know. So no one does anything stupid. Yeah. So it's a seven seven tie. You know, anytime you you have Tampa Bay and Green Bay, though, don't you expect this type of game? Yeah, the Battle of the Bays. It's not going to be a lot of scoring. That's it's right. probably going to be even at halftime, and it's going to come down to the fourth quarter. That's what this game eventually will be all about. Let's go down to Ron Pitts. Coach, the kind of game that we talked about before the game, going back and forth, high score, it's hot, but uh, you had to expect it. Yeah, you know it's going to be a tough game. They're playing well. Uh, we had some chances early to get on the board and didn't take advantage of it, so it's going to be a tough second half. What are the adjustments you're going to make offensively? Well, we got to, uh, you know, get a little bit better pass protection on our left side and uh, hopefully run the ball a little bit better in the second half. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck to you. That's the end of the first half with the score Green Bay 7, Tampa Bay 7. Fox NFL Sunday will continue from Tampa Bay. You know, the sun went down. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, earlier, that you know, we talked about, factor. right, the Green Bay sideline, remember, was, was so much warmer than Tampa Bay because the, the sun was shining right on them, and, and, and that's that's gone now. 
usually when you you know you get this then the thing that you worry about is cramping and and then you have to get fluids in there. Dramatica takes it in the end zone out of bounds. They'll start at the 20. My uh, Mark, Ron Pitt start with talked with Mike Sherman just a few moments ago. Let's send it down to Ron. All right, Coach, you guys came into this game plus five and a giveaway takeaway. And the first half, you're minus two. I know that doesn't sit well with you. No, it doesn't. Uh, turnovers and field position decide a football game. And right now, we're fortunate to have it tied up. Uh, we got to do something about that in the second half. Our cover teams, we gave them the ball three times at the 50 yard line. We can't do that. But we got to shore up our cover teams and we got to force some turnovers. How much of a factor has the Heat been? Not a factor. It's not a factor in the football game. All right, Coach, good luck, second half. That's one of those things you tell yourself it's not a factor. This is Armand Green. Well, you know, as a coach, you can't let it be a factor because there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can't you can't quit and go home. You you, you still have to play and you have another half to go and you have to get some things going. Look at this. Here's the here's the thing that Mike Sherman was talking about. You know, two turnovers and that led to seven points and then the Buccaneers have no turnovers. So that's a battle. You know, if you're going to give up to then to get it even, you better get to. Green's a deep back, and he gets the carry. Let's again go down to Ron Pitts. Guys, plenty of injuries for the Green Bay Packers. Rondell Mealy, he's got a concussion. He got hit on that punt return. He's still in the locker room. He's questionable. Kabir Bajabiamila got a neck stinger. He's probable. And Nate Wayne, the linebacker, aggravated an old injury on his right knee. He got retaped, and he's expected to be back in the game. Matt? Third for the offensive unit of the Green Bay Packers now. Third and about two. One make it. It's a long one. Here's Favre to Henderson. And they get the first down out of bounds in front of the Buccaneer bench. You know, and that's the difference. And I think I, I think that the Buccaneers eventually have to get to more of that if Brad Johnson is what they expect. That that here, you know, the Packers get third and short, and they let Brett Favre who was the MVP in this league for three years, who's as good a player as you're going to find in this league, make the play for him. Number four is one of the guys you'd pay to see play. I would. Yeah, you would, and, and you would pay to, to be on the same team as him. He's one of the few guys that really has fun playing the game. Henderson, no game. Look at his first half passing chart. We'll see the, the the gold ones are the complete. He completed one behind the line of scrimmage, four short ones in this area, one on the left at 10 yards, and then the one over here on the right to Bill Schrader. So he's only completed eight passes. I mean, you know, Brett Favre hasn't really lit things up yet. Of course, he has those two interceptions, and the two interceptions become great drive stoppers. And touchdown makers for the opposition if they take it like Quarles did. Antonio Freeman hasn't caught a pass yet today. That's Bradford. And I think that could be Bradford's first catch. I think it is. Bradford is a speed guy. You're going to see him out here come up, and he's going to turn to his left, running out. Now work back a little. See, and then and then Brett Favre can do that as well as anyone. Throw the ball where the only guy that can catch it is your guy. Buccaneers, you look at their blitzing today on pass plays. They haven't blitzed four, 14 times. They've only blitzed twice. Monty Kiffin said uh, the other day that they were going to be more yeah. aggressive, that he felt against Minnesota that they played too much zone and, you know, you know, when they really needed to play and that they got a little soft. And he said, "We're going to get out of that, and we're going to we're going to blitz a little more. We're going to we're going to pressure uh, Brett Favre a little more than, than we did a week ago against Minnesota. A little bit short on the pass completion from Favre to Bradford. There's Monty Kiffin there. The, the thing that you do, you like to be aggressive, but you don't like to have your defensive backs hanging out there man to man where you can get the big play against you. You know, sometimes you can jump on short stuff or, or stop or run." For a yard or two, but then you become vulnerable to a 50-yard pass. Well, that first interception they got, they just waited and jumped on it. Green is the deep back. Henderson in front of him. Come on, Green. 
First down in the Buccaneer territory across the 50. Mon Green has a good feel for that. We're talking about how he came out of Nebraska, went to the Seattle Seahawks. And and with the Seattle Seahawks, he was a backup running back, but he was the short yardage and goal line specialist. That's what he did. They bring him in on third down to, to get first downs, and you can see that's that's a good feel. You know that that in any defense there's going to be a soft spot. And you have to find that soft spot, put your shoulders down, keep your feet moving. First and ten, Green Bay. Green. Looking for somewhere to go, couldn't find it. He's got the speed to cut something back like that. He won the 100 and 200 meter dash in high school in Nebraska. And you see the way the, the Buck defense played that. They just got four or five guys around it, including the corner, Rondi Barber. And see, there's no cutbacks there. I mean, I mean, they're going to, he's going to start off here to the right. Now, watch this backside. In fact, here's Rondi Barber here. You see that you guys got onside, but this group here has backside. Well, Booker McFarland's coming yeah. in from the from the backside. Rondi Barber, who's a corner, and outside was the guy that made the tackle. Second and 13. Five out of the spread. Drops the throw. Up the middle, incomplete, intended for his tight end, Bubba Frank, just off his fingertips. Yeah, but Warren Sapp hit Brett Favre again just as he threw that ball. I mean, he's there. Sapp doesn't have a sack yet, but he's getting awfully close to it, and he's getting there just as they're throwing the ball. Look at that. The, the sap and the ball and the release all got there about the same time. Watch him. Here's Warren Sapp here. And you see, he, he has a motor. He's always going, going, going. Brett Favre just throws the ball, and Sapp reminds him that he's there. Any later than that, though, Sapp could be in trouble. Third, 13. Attempted screen pass dropped by Dorsey Levens. Then it's fourth and 13, and Green Bay will punt it. Green, Green Bay probably wouldn't have gotten the first down on that anyway, because you know, we talked about the, the one thing. I mean, this Buccaneer defense does a lot of things real well, but one of the top things they do is tackle and gang tackle. Carl Williams back deep. Had a couple of good returns in the first half. This is the thing Mike Sherman was talking about. I'm sure he talked about it at halftime. We have to shore up our coverage teams. Josh Bidwell, the punter, good kid. Oh, this is dandy. Bounces at the one, and it's down at the one. Green Bay bounce. Donald Driver was down early. And the Buccaneers stopped very deep, close to their own end zone. That's the Yankee Hawks family. Game two, the Braves, the Astros, the Cardinals, the Diamondbacks. Tampa Bay starts from their one. Still hard to run right there. Gilbert Brown. With Gilbert, a stalemate is good. You know, and that's that's a pretty good matchup there because we have Gilbert Brown, but the guy blocking was Randall McDaniel. Has been in this league for 14 years. He doesn't really have the, the power that he has. I mean, he has the upper body power. He doesn't have the light power that he used to have. But he's still getting the job done. Well, but Gilbert is taking away the cutback. Gilbert's on this side now. You can't run at him and you can't cut back into him. All stop deep. He gets the carry again. Breaks one, breaks two. Gets out to about the nine. Mostly on just all stud effort. He's something. He's a he's a fun guy to watch too when he gets going. I mean, if you can, if the Buccaneers ever really had a good offense where they could get like a two or three touchdown lead and then get into fourth quarter and, and let him go, yeah. Stop, that would really be a fun offense. How about this? Look at this. They've outscored opponents 56 to nothing in the second half this season. Of course, they don't do very well in the first half sometimes. All start again. Pounding and gets, I believe, the first down. Yes, he did. Oh, Jerry Wunsch, your old right tackle. He ended up about 10 yards deep. I have no idea what happened to him. Watch all start here again with the power. See, it's a little counter. And let, that's his old guard get in front of him, McDaniel. And then and then make a little movement. 
So here's all star with that little counter. There's McDaniel 64 leading him. And they just waits just enough so they can get a little help from that offside line. Well, they got a little bit of breathing room now. 7-7 seven, seven tie, first and ten. Packers show blitz. Brad Johnson drops it out to Jameel Cook. You know, here's here's Brad Johnson's passing chart, and you can see that he had one behind the line of scrimmage, but about 10 yards is about as deep as he's thrown. So everything, look, look at all these at five yards. I mean, that you know, at some point you got to throw the ball up in here to loosen that defense up. If you don't, they're just going to get tighter and tighter to the line of scrimmage. And that no, one, as no. you said, it was a blitz. Darren Sharper, the safety, was blitzing. So that's the eighth man up. What's he third on the all-time list of pass completions percentage? Yeah, but at some that's point, why. At some point, you have to get vertical. There's one. Vertical. Caught by Keyshawn Johnson. Good throw from Brad Johnson. He made that same throw to the same side to the same guy last week against the Minnesota Vikings. But when he opens his shoulders to his left like that, Leroy Butler said he's always going to throw to his left. And that's a good throw. And that day he put it right in, right in the basket. First and ten. That was one of the, the Packers keys they said they have on Brad Johnson is one that he'll usually look at the receiver that he's going to throw to. And then two, if he ever opens his shoulders towards the left side, he will always throw to the left. 16-yard gain, the longest play of the day for Tampa Bay. And that's what they have to do. Keyshawn in motion again. Pump fake, and down goes Brad Johnson. Uh, they tried Javier that. Bajamiel Miller. Yeah, they tried that quick screen. They, 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 you know that thing? Watch Keyshawn up here. You see, he's going to go in motion. They're trying to get it out to him right now, but there was good coverage there, so Brad Johnson had to bring it down. And when he had to bring it down, he got doing. You see, watch that. You see, 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 he's trying to throw. It's tough to take a sack on a play that's supposed to be thrown or completed behind the line of scrimmage. Dia Miller. That's his eighth sack. And, the, and the, the thing that really got that sack was Mike McKenzie, the corner number 34, getting up there into that backfield on Keyshawn Johnson. Brad Johnson out, five short, incomplete. Tended for Cook again. Nothing there. And if he completed it, he got no gain. Oh, the fans are booing that and saying they want to throw deeper because he did. He, he threw that one deep. He got it out to Keyshawn Johnson. And then he goes to, you know, you know two dinks in a row. And of course, I mean, you can't say it's all Brad Johnson. Part of his pass protection, part of it is Brad Johnson. Part of it is play calling, too. Last year's quarterback, Sean King. They change quarterbacks. They change offensive coordinators. They change players. But the offense always kind of looks the same, doesn't it? Still makes you think of nine. Brad Johnson out of the shotgun this time. Keyshawn comes back in motion. Brad retreats. Bay Miller again. Knocked it loose, and that's a fumble. Green Bay's ball. John Theory made the recovery. That's the thing that Mike Sherman talked about: is we have to get, we have to win that turnover battle. Watch Bajamia. No, he, he, he's going to come from the outside. Here he is on this side this time. Usually, you know, we saw him earlier. He was playing on the right side. That time he comes from the left side, gets a left hand on him and a right hand on the ball. That is speed that does that. Billy, he's right here. And now what he's going to do is he uses the speed. Now right here, as I said, when he gets even, he's leaving. And he just has too much speed. He gets here, he's even, he's leaving, and sack. Green from far over the right side for about three. You know, we always think of, of, of speed, you know, and how important it is for wide receivers and running backs sometimes and, you know, and how important it is for defensive backs. But when you get a mismatch yeah. like that in speed in any area, it's going to hurt you. He gives you nothing to block. Uh, and, and as you know, we we're talking to Mike Sherman about it, and Donatello, it's just a natural instinct that he had when he said, we, you know, they didn't know if he could play or not in the league, but they, they did know one thing, he could rush the passer. Green again, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. 
540 left in the third quarter, 7-7 tie. You know, one thing, the, the Bucks defense always starts with one thing. You know, when you say, what do you have to do? What are you going to do? Every player, every coach will always say, we got to stop the run. So they come in here. Monty Kiffin is going to stop the run, try and make you one-dimensional, and then get after your quarterback, try and not to blitz. Monty lost two really good assistants last year. Lovey Smith went to the Rams and took over their defense. Herman Edwards went to the Jets as the head coach. Far out of the shotgun, fires it up the middle. Boss 11, I'm on green, beg your pardon, couldn't break the tackle. Yep. Rondé Barber. And Favre knows better than that. I mean, he was looking for someone to get him a completion and get him a first down. And he knows he didn't he didn't want to do that or have that happen because they have to settle for a field goal try. I used to always say field goal or, or a chip shot. You, you taught me there's no such thing as a chip shot. No, no. They always have to make them, don't they? Just think about golf. There's no such thing as a gimme. Yes, you do have to make them. And Longwell does from 35 yards to make the Packer lead three. It's 10 7, 420 left to play in the third quarter. In Tampa, where the Buccaneers trail the Packers by three now. This is the area that Coach Mike Sherman was worried about his coverage team, and specifically his kickoff coverage team. A week ago, he sent all his coaches down, and each coach coached one guy on his team. Including him. At the five, Dwight Smith. A flag on the play back at the 20. And Smith was tripped up. Bob McElwee. K.D. Williams, one of the first guys down there, one of the best, better special teams players on the on the Packers. Remember the story with him? I think he was a he was a sky cap here in Tampa, wasn't it? Holding yep. number 91 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. 4-10 left. As again, the Green Bay. Packers force the bus back into the hole. Such a hurry. I think I think that big old turtle will make a good nose tackle. <laughs> you can play him down here like Gilbert Brown just say, you just take care of the middle turtle. I don't know if he'd rush the pass or not. No, no, Gilbert doesn't either. Here's Brad Johnson. Underneath to Jameel Cook. The big old turtle and Gilbert, they kind of handle all that stuff right inside and they don't rush the pass so much. They got the the draw, they'll help you a little on the screen and uh, stay in that inside box. Gilbert got his weight down. As you pointed out earlier, he was neighboring or approaching 400 at one time. They named a burger after him. And he took advantage of that. Here's Leroy Butler playing back now, and, and, and we see up there, we see Darren Sharper. It used to be the opposite. Yeah. Remember Butler was always up there? Now now Darren Sharper tends to get up closer to the line of scrimmage. Brad well, Johnson just doesn't get rid of it. Keyshawn Johnson complete out of bounds. Keyshawn Johnson uh, is nicknamed 7 Eleven. Said he's 7 Eleven because he's always open. And today he's been pretty good. I mean, that's about seven passes he's caught today. I think I, I think what he has to do, though, is, is get a big one, or break a big one, make a big play. You know, part of the possession is good, but it's not going to score touchdowns until you get inside the 20 yard line. First and 10, Tampa Bay at their own 30. He shot on the move and the handoff is to Allstock. Allstock. You got to gang tackle him and the Packers did just that. When they, you know, we talked about Baja Biamela and, you know, being such a, a good pass rusher and having such good speed. One of the things that you do when you get a guy like that in there, you, you try and run at him. The other thing you try and do is draw and screen those types of things that you know take advantage of his aggressiveness. But then you get to a point on second and long, third and long, you can't do anything about it. But on that last play, they did run at him. Oh, Bonnie Holiday leaving. For years they tried to do that, just what you're talking about to Charles Haley. I don't 
don't know if this guy's a Charles Haley or not. Charles Haley is about as good as they've ever yeah. gotten. Well, there goes Brad Johnson again. They can't block for him. Nate Wayne was there. They can't get it done, and there's number 94 again. I tell you, he is, he is something. It looks like he has a, a, a cast on his arm. He has everything. You see, here's the blitz cover from that outside the same side. And that's Nate Wayne. He's the first guy there. The yep. blitzing, that's that's not much of a block. Amelia, you see that he does have the, the cast on his thumb. And still, even, even with that, he's just using the speed. That's a new tackle, too. Not Jerry Wunsch. Pearson. Uh, Wunsch was having, having trouble. Wunsch has always had trouble with speed. Outside goes to Paul Williams. Williams forced out of bounds. Bonnie Holiday headed to the Packer locker room. It's a big loss for the Packers. Yeah. If Bonnie Holiday doesn't get back. The fans are booing Brad Johnson as he walks off the field again for that same type of thing. You know, not not being able to get first down. Antonio Freeman back deep. Mark Royals to punt. I was talking to Mark Royals before the game. He wants to be a broadcaster. He does. Yes, he does. He said not many kickers are broadcasting. I'd like to do one. Did he know you were a kicker? I, he didn't say that. He was talking about Dave Jennings. Green Bay takes over. And Tampa Bay seven. The word on Bonnie Holiday is that he has a strained groin. Went into the locker room to be rewrapped. Next week, don't forget. Giants and the Rams, Lions, Vikings, 49ers play the Falcons, Cardinals, Bears. First and ten, Green Bay. There's John Lynch right up there, and he's coming. Far. Schrader was open, but there's a little miscommunication. Yeah, see, Far knew that. He saw John Lynch up there. John Lynch, the strong safety. Came up was right at the line of scrimmage. You could tell he was going to blitz. So Favre knows that when he sees John Lynch blitzing, when blitz, when, when Lynch is here, he's going to have man-to-man -man out there. So he knows that he's going to have man-to-man. -man. He's going to have to get rid of the ball quickly, and he does. Amon Green did a good job picking up John Lynch on the blitz. When you get the blitz and you get man-to-man, -man, some receiver has to beat the defensive back. Yeah. Here's Favre. <laughs> he said, I'm not a runner, and I'm going to get down when I feel like I'm going to get a hit. And I'm going to get down. And the coaches always tell him, get out there, get down, get down. And he said, you know, I'm not a runner, and, and I will get down, but the thing is, I am a competitor. And he said, and he told Mike Sherman, I just want you to know that if it comes to getting a touchdown, if it comes to getting a first down, and I have to run, I'm going to run and get that touchdown or first down. And you kind of know he would anyway. Favre headed over toward the bench. He knows the quarter is coming to an end. They have a three-point lead. The Packers do. He's heading gingerly over to the vent. To the vent. Is. He's starting way to look to like it. a 32-year-old guy now there. And that's the end of the quarter. The third one with the score. Green Bay 10, Tampa Bay 7. Fox NFL. Summerall to John Madden. The Packers lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by three. Here comes a buck blitz. Far throws it. Got a man open. Schrader. And Schrader, he's got some speed himself. Out of bounds at about the 48. And that's, what, that's how you want to use your speed. You use your speed two ways, going up the field or going across the field. Because you can use it coming up. And now here you just use it going across the field. It's the same thing. I mean, Bill Schrader has very good speed, and he used it earlier, we saw, going up the field, and that time coming across the field. I don't know about that jumping out of bounds. I can see the quarterback doing that, but I, wide receiver, sometimes if you make a cut back in as they're coming across, you can make a big play. 18 yards he made on that play. First down, of course, but something else could have been there.
Timeout Green Bay. Barb heads over sort of disgustedly to the sideline. Back in Tampa, the Packers lead the Bucks by three, 10 7. 14 25 left in the fourth. He was doing a good job as Chad Clifton, the left tackle. Here's Simeon Rice playing against him today, and you haven't heard much from Simeon Rice. Oh, uh huh, I saw that one coming. William Henderson was intended hung up a little bit he was hit by Rondé Barber Yeah, Rondé Barber I don't know if he was going for the head for the helmet or for the ball watch as far throws this watch Rondé Barber come up Whew. he's going to come up and down like that unload I guess he used his shoulder first but he sure knocked Henderson stuff back the other way second and ten Andy Barber, not that big a man. No, oh, I know. Out of 180 pounds, but he brings all 180 of it, doesn't he? Bradford and Freeman to the left. Barb rolls right. Gets Bubba Franks. The tight end out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. Stopped by Dexter Jackson. That's that bootleg again, and there's no one that throws the ball on the run again better than Brett Favre. And that time he hit his tight end, Bubba Franks. And that's a, the first pass that Bubba Franks has caught. You look at Brett Favre. He hasn't been sacked today. He's been hit four times. He's been hurried 11 times. Most of that by Sapp and McFarland. And of course, he does have those two interceptions. Sean Quarles won in that one back 98 yards. That was the Buccaneer touchdown. And it's 10 7. That's the only one they have. Third and two. Here is Amon Green. Stopped by Dexter Jackson, but he punished him. Well, I don't know exactly what what the heck Warren Sapp did. I don't know if that was a, a stunt, but he he jumped. He was on the right side, and he jumps to the outside. Watch him here. They both jump to the outside. Watch him jump out here. I have no idea what the heck that is. I mean, they have like three guys outside, yeah. and Amon Green's going to the inside. If it were a stunt, the end, Simeon Rice should have come underneath to make a play. But he, Warren Sapp, jumped out, and they both ended up outside. First and 10, Green Bay at the 32-yard line. Here's Green again. Good. Taken down Green by McFarland for a game break. Let's return to James Brown and lost the first rushing touchdown by the kicker. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen them use that play before. Yeah. You know, this is the third time these two teams have played each other this season. I know it. Twice in preseason. Yeah. Once in Oakland, once in Mexico City, and then the third one in regular season in Oakland. Barb drops the throw. It. Intended for Bradford, who got one hand on it, bounced around. He was pretty well covered. Barb had to lay it right in there, and he almost did. Yep, Schrader has the speed. Uh, Corey Bradford also has the speed, and we thought that was the same pattern earlier that Bill Schrader ran that crossing pattern, and that's the area that you also use your speed. You know, Brett Favre was talking about conventional passing, you know, where you drop back conventional drop back passing and unconventional he said if I throw 40 passes he said 38 of them will be unconventional not so much of the drop back three steps and five steps reverse coming to Bradford that to Freeman I beg your pardon and a loss by the Buck defense and there's a flag on the play oh there's flags all over the place there. now and there's flags there's hats there's beanbags they're throwing everything. Look at the He still got his. This is going to be multiple. And Bob McElwee wants to talk to one official first, the umpire, to see what he has. He's going to tell them the first thing that he saw. See, the referee is Bob McElwee, and, and everyone has to tell him, because he doesn't see everything. He's just protecting the quarterback. They have to tell him what they saw or what they have. That was a funny call. They were talking about earlier how you know Brett Favre is such a great quarterback and can make plays. Why, when you're you know on the 30-yard line, why you run a reverse? Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 94, Green Bay. Number 84, Tampa Bay. Continuing action after the end of the play. The down counts. Fourth down.
Yeah, I mean this this has to be one right there. Yeah. And then Schrader comes back. Those are the two. It was 34 and 84. Not 94. No. And they all they're always going to get the guy that comes back second. Dexter Jackson. Yeah, he was the first guy. And they got him, but if there's, if there's going to be one penalty, it should have been against Dexter Jackson. Yes, it should. Yeah, that all rule. Who started it? Who you started it. Started, you started it. I didn't start it. He started it. But the second guy always gets caught. You know I that. Know, but remember in school, they, sure. the, the teacher would always say, started. started it. I didn't start it. <laughs> he started it. Yeah, they're going to come on a block here. This is a situation where you have to come on a punt block. Packers are going to down it very effectively done. Chris Aikens was down to make sure that the Bucks have a long way to go. Seven, there are some cheese heads in attendance, some hard hats. Packer fans are all over the country. You know, and the thing is, and down here in Florida, there's not a lot of people that seem to be from Florida. They're all from other places, yeah. and you know, if they're from Wisconsin, they're from Michigan, they're from the Midwest. So that's that's why this is such a great divisional rivalry. Buccaneers start at the five. They give to Allstott. Allstott gets not much, and the crowd again with a chorus. It lets the folks know that run the Buccaneers. They don't approve of that call. Now that guy there, this big old guy here, is just saying throw the ball. Yep. Well, he gave that right hand motion, but it's tough in there. We see Vonnie Holiday's back. Remember, saw him yeah. earlier going in. He got a wrap for his groin or re-wrapped, and now he's back in there. And the run stopper and, and Gilbert Brown was in on that play. Pass complete outside to Keyshawn Johnson. And Johnson will get him out of the hole up to the 28. And there's Keyshawn Johnson here. He's going to run this, this, this short out right here. Sharper comes. He takes a bad angle. Yep. And then Keyshawn is able to get by him. And then right at the end, Tyrone Williams is going to make the tackle. That's Keyshawn been one of the. coming out. That was taking himself out. He's, Pointing to his head or his shoulder. Oh, he just went down. Carl Williams. Keyshawn Johnson just yeah, went down. On the way out. He, yeah, he started, he was pointing to his head yeah. or his shoulder, and then, and then he just went down in a heap. Yeah. Watch this. A long way back to that sideline. And he's down. Eight catch it. Ten seven the score. Keyshawn Johnson made it over to the sideline. Bucks are ready to go. Carl oh, Williams has taken his place. All stop. This was Keyshawn Johnson here, Pat, just as he's walking off the field and you can see him wince there. He and just goes down on the way off. So he's, he's, first of all, he motioned to the sideline. Then he went down. Then they worked on him. They uh, checked his back on the sideline. Now he's back now in. Now he's back in and heads out to the left. Second and six. All side got four. First down. Deshaun comes in motion. Johnson drops the throw. Incomplete. Batted down. It looked like it was his shoulder on that last play when he was out there. He was trying to rotate his shoulder, but as he lined up before he went in motion. But he's the guy. You know, Brad Johnson has a go-to guy right now. Of course, it's Keyshawn Johnson, and that pattern that he just ran that the ball was knocked down on is a crossing pattern. That's that's his biggest pattern. You know, come in motion a little and then run across and find a hole in the in the Packer zone. Keyshawn goes wide left again. Johnson from the shotgun. Keyshawn, here comes the Packer blitz. They do manage to pick it up, and Johnson throws down the middle, complete to Riddell Anthony. 
first down. Hey, that was good pass protection because yep. the Packers, as you say, they were coming on him, and they had the blitz on, and he knows now when he feels the blitz, he knows that he's going to have man-to-man, -man, and the guy that he finds is right here, Redell Anthony, and he throws a darn near a perfect strike. It was a little behind, behind him, him, but he found the guy that had man-to-man. -man. Now watch how he keeps looking downfield, looking downfield, and then when he sees it, pop, he just unloads it. First and ten Buccaneers. That was a clutch first down. And that's a, that's a tough thing to do. To, you know, but the great quarterback, any quarterback has to do it to play in this league is not watch a rush. All stop. Not backwards at the 50. You see what else? See him not backwards. Yeah, but you see what else was knocked backwards and knocked out of there? I think the ball. One thing that uh, Mike Allstar, remember a couple years ago, had a problem with fumbling. And that time he was he was hit and it looked like the ball came out. That's just the ball. He just got it, Gilbert uh, Brown. That's what knocked backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw something that didn't come out of there. <laughs> That's Gilbert Brown. Miles Dix. Second and eight. Right at midfield. Butler, here's Johnson running. That looked like a planned play, and he got a first down. He's not widely renowned as a runner. No, and he's not. You know, we talked about Brett Favre running when you have to compete. Yep. And that's what he is. I think he missed a handoff. I, I think, think this too. is a run. Yeah, I think this is a fouled up play. They saw it there. Instead of running out of bounds here, at some point, to make a play, to win a game, you have to do this. I mean, I know you, you don't want to get hit. You don't want to get hurt. You want to slide and all those things. But a competitor will make these kind of plays. You also want to know when to duck. <laughs> and he did it the right time. Because you know when you're slow, it's going to take you a long time to get there. And if it takes you a long time to get there, a lot of their guys duck. are going to get there. <laughs> better duck. Keyshawn Johnson was the man in motion. Here's Allstott again. And Allstott breaks into the Packers secondary. He might score. Allstott touchdown. Mike Allstott, 39 yard scamper. That's what we said earlier. It would be fun if this offense could ever get where they scored a lot of points to see Mike Allstott take over and run downhill in the fourth quarter. They didn't score a lot of points. They weren't ahead. But Mike Allstott takes over and runs downhill. There he is downhill. He gives you nothing to hit in there. Bounces to the outside. Keyshawn Johnson trying to get out in front. Doesn't get out in front and makes a block. A good lead block. Jameel Cook and the Buccaneers make the extra point to lead 14-10. Five left. 14-10 Tampa Bay over Green Bay. Corey Bradford back deep for Dramaticus kick. He almost missed the extra point. Bradford will feel this deep in the end zone and down it. The Packers will start from the 20. 6.38 left now. You know, Brad Johnson yep. is the guy that started that drive off. When you look at this, that play, it was a, it was a missed handoff. And he was supposed to hand off to Mike Allstock. Now watch him miss the handoff. Now watch Allstock here after he doesn't get the ball. He put he makes a block, then he puts his hands up like, what the heck's happening? What's yeah. going on? Brad Johnson runs and doesn't go out of bounds, cuts back in, and gets the first, gets the down. first down. I think I think that adds a lot, and I think that helped on this play. Santana Dotson missed the tackle, another missed tackle. Good block out here in front by Keyshawn Johnson. But Brad Johnson set it up. Brad Favre going for the bundle. Intercepted. By Dexter Jackson over the shoulder. And the Bucks get the ball back. A flag on the play. A flag on the play. He was Holding going for Corey Bradford. Number 79 offense. That penalty is declined. First step. 
was Barry Stokes, the left tackle. He just came in for Chad Clifton. Chad Clifton has a full hamstring. They were hoping that it doesn't make any difference because they still get the interception. He hears Corey Bradford. Looks like he starts to pull up there at the end. And Dexter Jackson makes a heck of a play, a heck of a yeah. catch. That's that old cover two, you know, yeah. where that safety has the deep half. Dexter Jackson had that half. Looks like Corey Bradford has a cold hamstring. And you're going to see here, you see the hit. Now here's Dexter Jackson. Now watch the jump that he gets. He comes from all the way in the middle of the field. That is getting a jump in the ball and catches the ball on the other side of the numbers. First and 10, Tampa Bay. All stop deep. I think Brad Johnson just called an audible. Drops it out to Jameel Cook. Bernardo Harris knocked him out of bounds. Is Dexter Jackson? That was a heck of a play. I mean, that's that's the thing that when you're a free safety and you're playing what they call center field, you have to be able to go from the center of the field all the way to the right or left sideline. Corey Bradford there either either has a hamstring pull or or a cramp. Sometimes when you first get them, the symptoms yeah, are the same. It could be. Second and four. All stop time. About half of it. And they brought Darren Sharper up there, number 42, on a on a blitz, and All Stop ran right into the side of the blitz. That's a that's a guessing game. You know, you try and try and guess which way they're going. Now watch All Stop. He just doesn't give you anything to hit. I mean, he doesn't have a chance here, but. His feet are always going, his shoulders are always low, and the only thing you're going to hit is knee or shoulder pads. Or the top of the helmet. And you better get a whole bunch of guys <laughs> there to do it. Yeah. Third and four. Brad Johnson has complete the key shot. Tyrone Williams, beg your pardon. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those things that you don't want to run a nun yard route. You know, and I still don't know why they put those things in when it's third down and you complete complete a pass and you don't get a first down when you only had four or five yards to go anyway. But I guess that's a subject for another time. That's yeah, uh, Clyde Christensen talking with Brad Johnson. Bradford does have cramps. Or did you mention that? No, I just mentioned that I thought, you know, the way it looked, it either had cramps or a pull, and the Does have cramps. symptoms sometimes look the same. Mark Royals back. Freeman doesn't get far. Don't forget coming up here on Fox Baseball. The defense makes a big play. They get an interception. Yep. They can, you know, take this game over. They go boom, boom, boom. They're right back out. The defense is right out there again. And you can't give Brett Favre too many shots at you. Donald Driver spit wide, spit wide to the left. Favre maybe changing plays. Mon Green is deep and he gets the carry. One thing they've, they've they've kept them on green under yeah. under control. That do well. That's that's the thing that they're going to do is not get beat deep and, and not let you run on them. Wall limping just a bit, but yeah. staying in nevertheless. He's had a tough day today, blocking Booger McFarland and Warren Sapp all day. Far back to throw. Freeman. That's his first catch of the day, but you see what he did. He, he gets open and he knows that he can't keep running because he'd just go out of bounds. So he just kind of takes a knee and just sits there and Brett Favre puts the ball right on him. Makes the reception on his knee. Remember, I remember when Antonio Freeman was the go to guy yeah. that in a game like this would have seven or eight pass receptions by now and. Now we get three minutes, 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and he just catches his first pass. 
Well, he took a tremendous hit in preseason. And that takes some time to get over. Well, you know, one of the things that Mike Sherman talked about is explosive plays. And with his definition, you have to win explosive plays, he says. And what his definition is, is you have to have a 12 yard run or a 16 yard pass, and you have to win that battle. Now, they've had one 12 yard plus run, five passes for a total of six. Tampa Bay has four. They've won the explosive plays battle, but they're still losing the game. That's because of that big interception. To Henderson to the 30. Clock keeps running. 304 left now. Green Bay has two timeouts left. And they do figure that into, in, into they take that into account that you have to have explosive plays, win that battle, and win the battle of turnovers. I think that's all academic now. It's 14 to 10. You know it's going to go down in the fourth quarter. These two teams play. You know it's going to be low score. You know Brett Favre is going to have a chance to beat you. Bradford's back in. Favre moves Green over to his left. Drops the throw and fires it up to Amon Green. And the clock continues to run. Favre limping a little bit. Yeah, he's limping because he got he got hit on that one. And you're gonna see here he gets the in fact the, the Buccaneers weren't ready for it and Favre got hit just as he threw the ball. Marcus Jones, the left defensive end, hit him that time. But it didn't look like the Buck defense was ready. I mean they were all just kind of standing around. The ball was snapped. They're all trying to get close to the grass to get some oxygen out of it. Tampa Bay leads it 14 to 10 with two minutes left. Two minutes left. The Packers did snap the ball before we got back. And Bob McElwee came on the on the mic and said that the timeout wasn't over. Usually the umpire, he's the guy behind the in fact, he's right here. He usually stands on the ball and doesn't let him snap it. Welcome to the Buffalo audience to Tampa Bay, where the Buccaneers lead the Packers 14 to 10 with two minutes left. Exactly two. The fake is to Amon Green. Barb gets rid of it. Gets it to David Martin. And they'll hurry up. David Martin, the backup tight end. Farm's trying to get him up there. Again, he's a, he's a master at this. Is that with a bootleg gets a first down and can run this two-minute drill better than anyone? Fires incomplete, intended for Schrader through his hands. One thing about Favre, you know, he'll 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 complete a lot of passes to you and receivers. Love to catch a lot of balls, but he will lead you yep. in coverage too. He kind of led Schrader into that one. I know if you want that ball where the defender can't hit you. But this is why they pay him all the money. This is why he's Brett Favre. These kinds of games, this situation, is what the NFL is all about. Favre has time, throws off his back foot, complete to Schrader. <laughs> That's enough for a first down. I don't know how he got it there. I, I have no idea how he got it there. Warren Sapp has no idea how he got it there. I think Warren's fine. He's just resting. No, no, I think he has no idea. I mean, I mean, he's been chasing Brett Favre all day. Watch Brett Favre. I mean, he throws it. He's going back. And he always does that. I mean, this is nothing new for him. As he said, if he throws 40, he said 30 of them, 38 of them will be like that. But that's why he's so frustrating. He doesn't have to have a pocket. He doesn't have to step up. He doesn't have to throw a spiral. But he just knows how to get the football from his hand to his receiver. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman, the associate directors Mike Roy, the broadcast associates Charles McDonald and Kerry Foster. Technical producer Bob Muller. Pre-game show was produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Senior producers Bill Brown, executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. 
You know, someone told Brett Favre, remember a couple years ago, he was having all these games where they come from behind and win, and he said, well, you, you, you look like you love it. You're fine. You, you love those kind of games? Yeah. He said, no, I hate these kind of games. He said, give me one where we're winning by three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Much more relaxing. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, a lot of these guys are leaving everything out in the field today. Far drops. Comes out of the pocket, hits him on green. Who gets out of bounds, stops the clock after he picked up about six. Again, what the Packers are doing right now is working themselves to get in position to go for the touchdown. To summarize what's happened, Hallstatt has 15 rushes, 77 yards, the big touchdown. Baja Via Miller has three sacks today, three more. That's nine for the year, allowed first and second half points of the season. First, second half points of the season, the Packers did. They had been unscored on in the second half till this, till the run by all stop. Screen pass to Green. Come on, Green. Runs over one Buccaneer down to the 13 yard line. Remember last week, Pat against Minnesota? Yep. Tampa Bay had to add the lead and they had to they had to stop the Vikings and the Vikings drove 94 yards and beat them. These things are saying, where's our defense now? We need our defense. Wrap them up, that guy's saying. 25 yard pickup on the screen pass from far to green. Handoff to Dorsey Levin. And the Packers only only have one timeout. And they just took that, so the Packers have no timeouts. I was surprised if they ran that play to, to the waste one. Again, with Brent Favre, I think you just let him throw the ball in the end zone three times. I remember once when I was coaching, I had this thing that I was going to run, and I said, let's run 16, now let's run 17. And George Bland, who was my quarterback then, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, let me throw three balls, three slants to Warren Wells, and I'll guarantee you a touchdown. I said, you'll guarantee it? He said, I'll guarantee it. I said, that's better than my deal. First pass, he throws low. Second pass, touchdown. That's what I would do. I'd take George Bland's advice now and throw three slants into the end zone. Even on fourth down? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Fourth down because they need a touchdown. I mean, 14 to 10, yeah. there's no, no reason to kick for anything. No. Yeah, I'd throw. You got three shots right there. Go back and think to the last Buccaneer touchdown and how nearly they came to missing that extra point. And that would change the whole complexion of things. Yeah, then a field goal could tie this thing up. Goal would tie it up. But this is why you have Brett Favre. This is why you pay him all that money. Freeman goes left, goes right. Favre, flags come down. Brett just took it and stood there. Brett looks like he's been playing nose tackle today. Been a long day. Right there. Look at this drive. He's been seven out of eight for the 67 yards. And some of them didn't Riders look all that snap. pretty. All star, number 88 offense, five yards, second down. Bubba Franks moved too soon. I don't think that changes anything. I mean, no. you still, you still got to throw the ball in the end zone. Yeah. You like to stay on sides, not move too early. But it doesn't change a thing, like you say. Yep. Brett Favre's going to be back there, and this is where you have to go some form of silent count because this crowd is not going to let Brett Favre get off without a silent count. Buccaneers lead 14-10. Favre back, steps up, and down he goes. They finally got him. Anthony McFarland was the first Buccaneer there, and the clock runs. That's your answer. That was the first sack the Buccaneers have today. They, now they've stopped the clock with 22 seconds left. Again, that run, that, that run that they ran to Dorsey Levins is the one that hurt him because then they had to use that last time out. Yeah. Clock is running now down to 15 seconds. Here's Bob. Locks it in the corner. That's going to be out of the end zone. Stops the clock with eight seconds left. Now this is far time. Yep, this is it. Fourth down, one play. One play, you make it, you win the game. They make it, and you lose the game. 
I'll tell you, there's there's a lot of empty tanks yep. out there today, Pat. Look at made. Brett Favre, but uh, you look at those Tampa Bay defensive linemen. Look at them gasping. Yep. You look at those those linebackers in the secondary. They're all down there in the goal line. They're going to play a real soft defense. Look, they only got four guys up here, and they have eight deep protecting the goal line. Here's Favre, and here goes Sapp chasing him, and here's knocked down in the end zone. Lynch, I believe, got a hand on it. Incomplete, and Favre is down. And this one's over. Tampa Bay, 14. We'll be back here in a moment. Tampa Bay 14, Green Bay 